ladies and gentlemen, she is absolutely fabulous. She's going to be massive, and you've seen her here tonight first. It's Miss Sarah Milligan! <laughs> About me um, first. Uh, I got married at 22 and divorced at 29. Have I got any divorcees in? Give us a cheer. <laughs> Some really happy people. Well done. <laughs> Have I got anybody in here who's married? Give us a cheer if you're married. Yeah. Don't sound as happy as that fella up there. <laughs> Never mind, your time will come. <laughs> who's married at the front? Give us a wave if you're married. Let's have a look. Nice lady, how long have you been married? Uh, three and a half. Three and a half years. Oh, you're nearly done. <laughs> when I got divorced, I moved back in with me mum and dad. That's not good, is it? No. When we first split up, somebody said it was like a bereavement. It's one of those stock phrases that roll out to people who've never thought of peeing on the husband's toothbrush. <laughs> I'm not telling them. Time's a healer. Plenty more fish in the sea. My own personal favourite, I never liked him. <laughs> that was me mum. <laughs> Still get the how are you head tilt, how are you? <laughs> Just want to get it straight, it isn't like a bereavement at all. Because if he died, I'd have had me mortgage paid. <laughs> and I could have danced on his grave. <laughs> When we first split up, I wanted to see a counsellor, and she suggested that I read Paul McKenna's How to Mend a Broken Heart. Got to page 30, and I slept with a 23 year old. <laughs> it's not what it said, <laughs> it's what it should have said. Because <laughs> it really bloody worked. <laughs> when I bought the book, I bought it off Amazon, and underneath it said, Customers who bought this also bought Suicide Isn't Always the Answer. <laughs> Because it sometimes is. <laughs> but when I became newly single, a friend of mine bought me a teapot for one mm, cow. <laughs> She's not my friend anymore. She's not even alive anymore. She's alive. She's just heavily disfigured. Some kind of teapot related incident. <laughs> but I had a bit of a New Year's resolution this year, decided that I was going to start watching me weight. I realise watching me weight doesn't imply that it's going to get any less, does it? <laughs> Just like I'm documenting how fat I'm going to get. <laughs> but I think because my downfall is cakes and puddings, I don't really drink an awful lot, and I was going to say I don't do drugs, but I did have a space cake once. <laughs> I just heard the word cake. <laughs> I just found it really dry. I mean, I might not know drugs, but I do know cake. <laughs> I think a bit of buttercream wouldn't have gone astray. <laughs> it's almost like they hadn't thought about the cake part at all. <laughs> but I think I'm like everybody else in that. There are bits of me I really don't like, and I really don't like my legs. And recently I decided, sod it, nobody cares but you, just wear a skirt. So I wore a skirt, and on the first day of wearing a skirt, I got whistled at by a builder. How good is that? It wasn't so much a wolf whistle as he went. Same thing at all, is it? It's like you would a little dog. <laughs> but I, I did, in a moment of stupidity recently, I did toy with maybe getting myself some thigh high boots. And sort of fishing for a compliment, I said to my sister, Where would I get thigh high boots that would fit my thighs? And she said, Well, trannies must get them from somewhere. <laughs> in storage and deciding what to keep and what to bin and I don't really know what I'm supposed to do with my wedding dress. Let's get some suggestions from the audience. What about somebody from the top layer? Tell me, what do you think I should do with my wedding dress? Give us a suggestion. Burn it. Oh, did you hear that straight away? Bill even finished my sentence. Burn it. <laughs> Are you all right? <laughs> somebody give him a cuddle up there. <laughs> burn it. That's a bit of man, isn't it? Burn it. Put the ex-husband in it and just burn it. <laughs> Pretty sure that's murder. Um, 
suggestion from the lovely ladies in the front here. What about any of you lovely ladies? Give me a suggestion. What do you think? Well, you're conferring. That's good. Tell me. <laughs> Charity shop. I thought about that because there's one not far from where mum and dad live. It's always just full of pensioners. And I love the idea of an old lady buying it for like four pounds and just twirling. <laughs> <laughs> Some people often suggest that I sell it. Okay, as an audience, do you think there's much of a market for a second-hand wedding dress, yes or no? Yeah. Yeah, yeah for some fellas. Did you hear the fellas? Yes. Yeah. Get a cheap one. <laughs> and everyone get the flowers from a graveyard. <laughs> They're quite a nice, normal audience. I sometimes get quite weird suggestions. The weirdest one I've ever had, this guy said to me, totally straight face, I think you should wear it and follow him round in it. his girlfriend who was sitting beside him as if she was going to go, what's he like? And she just went. <laughs> That's not my favourite one. My favourite one I've ever had. Somebody said I should wear it on first dates. <laughs> oh, God, that... No, I'm not looking for anything serious. <laughs> la, la, la. <laughs> oh, you've been really nice. But I'll leave you with one thing. I've noticed recently uh, how you can tell as a woman whether or not you're overweight. It's during the throes of passion when your partner picks you up. Whether or not he says one, two, three first. <laughs> You'll be lovely. Thank you very much. Good night. Come on, Welcome. Fantastic. Sarah Millican, ladies and gentlemen. We're loving the Millican.